The last two chapters of this course will be devoted to the issue of implementation and enforcement of IHL. In this chapter, we'll begin by examining the general non-judicial mechanisms for implementing and enforcing IHL. As we will see, the implementation and enforcement of IHL primarily relies on states, which have an obligation to respect and ensure respect for IHL. Other mechanisms are also provided by IHL treaties. The majority of these mechanisms have either fallen out of use, such as the protecting powers, or were never taken up in practice, like the bilateral inquiry and the International Humanitarian Fact-Finding Commission. The only body that remains active in this regard is the International Committee of the Red Cross. However, other bodies, although not specifically provided by IHL treaties, also play a role in enforcing IHL, namely NGOs and the United Nations. The second major theme of Chapter 6 will be the issue of state responsibility for the breach of IHL norms. State responsibility refers to the set of rules that govern situations where states violate international law as well as the consequences that stem from such a violation. We will first distinguish state responsibility from individual criminal responsibility, which may apply to individuals who are the authors of IHL violations amounting to war crimes. Individual criminal responsibility will be examined in the next chapter. We'll then address the constitutive elements of state responsibility, including the attribution of IHL violations to states, the circumstances that preclude responsibility, and the consequences of such responsibility. <laughs>